Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information that you didn't even know you needed. Today, highly requested video, I'm going to pit TrueMe versus Pinwheel. These are two kids safe phones that um, have a lot of great features and we'll dig right into the review. So as I mentioned, Pinwheel and Trumi are both kids safe smartphones and they have a lot of similarities. So first, they both offer GPS and a customized app store. So this means that all of the apps that are available on both of these devices are highly curated. There are no social media apps. They are all apps that are approved for kid use. They also include contact approval. So people aren't going to be texting your child that you don't know. They won't be getting spam messages because a lot of the you know, inappropriate links and things can come through on spam texts. I know you get them. I get them for sure. So uh, that contact approval is on there. Um, you can also set time limits on different apps or different contacts too. So if you want your child to be able to contact you at any time, you can add them to an emergency contact list. They can call you at any time, but you can limit it so they're not contacting their friends or other relatives or things like that outside of the timeframes that you want them to be able to use that. Both of these phones also now feature message monitoring and uh, phone usage tracking. So you can see every message that the phone sends or receives on both of these devices, the Trumi and the Pinwheel. The hardware for both devices is actually also very similar. So there's actually one model on both that is the exact same phone hardware. It's a Samsung A32. So on the Trumi, it's going to be the, um, the just the Samsung A32. On Pinwheel, it's going to be the Pinwheel Plus phone. On Trumi, it's a little less expensive. It's about $279. On Pinwheel, that same phone is $330. So Pinwheel and Trumi both have smaller um, or uh, less expensive devices. So on the Pinwheel, they have a device that is $139 and they have a device that is $250. And the difference between the $250 one and the $330 one is the $330 one can go on any um, major mobile carrier. So Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, etc. The cheaper versions do not have the capability to be added to an AT&T or a Verizon network. So if you are a Verizon or an AT&T customer, you're going to be looking at that $330 one if you want to add it to your own current plan. And We'll get more into that because that is one place where the Pinwheel and the Trumi are a little bit different, but uh, I just wanted to mention the hardware. Um, if you get the highest uh, cost of both, it's actually the same exact hardware. Um, and then the lower model on the Trumi is a Samsung A12. Um, so it's just a little bit less specs than the A32. The Old, the other models on Pinwheel are just a little different. I think one is based on a Pixel and um, I'm not sure what the other one is. So now that we know everything that both of them can do, what about the differences between the two? Now I am going to mention I like both of these phones. Um, I think they are both great options and I think that it's just a dependence on what you are looking for in a kid safe smartphone. They do have some different features that um, can kind of sway you one way or the other. So let's start with Pinwheel. So the kind of pluses or features that are available on Pinwheel that are not available on a Trumi device is first bark monitoring. So while both of these devices have the ability for you to look at all of the text messages that are going back and forth, Bark will allow you to be alerted to anything concerning. So if you don't want to spend the time going through all of the messages, then Bark can help alert you to anything that's concerning that you might need to visit, um, you know, co communicate with your child about or anything like that. So I like that you can add Bark to the pinwheel. 
Now, um, it does have an additional fee that would be associated with Bark specifically. So you would be paying for the device. You'd be paying for Pinwheel's service. So the Pinwheel parent portal basically. And then you would also be paying for the cellular service that is going to the device. And then you would also be paying for the Bark monitoring. Um, so that would be three different charges if you wanna use that. But I do like that that option is available to you. Now with Bark, you do get unlimited devices. So that wouldn't just cover that device. It would cover any um, computer that they're using at home or anything like that. So, um, so there is more benefits to that Bark subscription, but um, that would be an additional charge that you would need to have if you went that route. So the big thing that I really like about Pinwheel is that it's carrier agnostic. So I can take the Pinwheel device and I can add it onto my own Verizon network, or I can add it, you know, if I'm a T-Mobile customer or whatever, I can just add that device to my regular plan. It's not going to be some network that I'm not familiar with. It's going to work similarly to all of the other devices that I have on that network. So I really like the fact that it is carrier agnostic. And since Pinwheel has been around for just a little bit longer, their app store is more significant. So at the time of this recording, they have 288 apps that you can enable for the device. So with these different devices, it doesn't come with any of these apps already enabled. So you can go through and any of the apps that you use as a family, say you use a scriptures app or you use a different calendar app or things like that, um, you can install those different apps. So there's 288 apps to choose from on the Pinwheel as opposed to 56 apps available on the Trumi. Again, these numbers are going to be increasing all the time. So at the time of this recording, that is the current number of apps available on both platforms. So Pinwheel does have the edge on this one for the number of apps that they have available. The other really fun thing about Pinwheel is these routines that you can set. So I can set up different routines that have checklists. So if my kids have the same chores that they do, I can set up a routine on their phone where it shows this checklist. They can check off their different items. And with these routines, you can set up different modes. So if I set up a mode for homework time, I can allow only educational type apps available during this homework time. Or if it's a bedtime, I can allow certain music apps to be available just during bedtime. So there's a lot of customization that you can do to allow apps during specific times of the day that you can't do on the Trumi device. So I really like that really specific customization. It can get overwhelming. There are a lot of options to choose from and you can set all sorts of different routines and different modes is what they call it um, for the different times of day but you can set up the whole day and then you can copy that to different days and you can set up a different day for holidays and things like that so it's really really customizable as to what apps are available during different time frames of the day and I really like that about Pinwheel. So now that we've discussed those let's get into the pros for Trumi. One thing that I love 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 about the Trumi is that it does have a web browser however you can set it up so it is a kids safe list only web browser, which means only safe listed websites can be accessible from that web browser. What I really like about that is with Pinwheel, there are a few workarounds. So say I'm in an app, they are working to you know control these a lot better and they will let you know if there are paths to the internet for specific apps as you enable them. But when you do find a path to the internet on a pinwheel device, it basically opens up the entirety of the internet. With Trumi, it has that safe list only browser. So if I find my way into a web browser, it's going to force it into this safe list only web browser. So I'm still only able to access the websites that I have specifically allowed. Now this can get a little tricky because some websites require other websites to also be allowed in order to display the entire thing. But you know, as you learn and you figure out which URLs that you need to add, then it will get a little easier. 
And what I really like about this is, you know, sometimes when your kids are in school, they are, their teacher will have them go to a website or do something on their phone. And if something does not have a web browser, it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to do that. But if you're able to let them use this kids safe web browser, then they can you know, participate in those functions during school and, and not be left out of those. So along with this KidSafe web browser, you do have the ability to enable Chrome as well. Um, Chrome would not be filtered, it would not be safe list only, but this allows the phone to kind of grow with your child as they've proven themselves worthy on, you know, the kids safe web browser, you're ready to kind of open it up a little bit further, you can enable this Chrome browser, and it can kind of grow with your child. Again, it's not going to be this safe list only. So you have to make sure that you're ready to graduate them to an open web browser, you can add filters, you know, on your home Wi Fi or things like that to help um, keep that web browser a little safer. But that is the warning there. But I like the fact that it can grow with your child. So while pinwheel is carrier agnostic, TrueMe is its own service. So you would pay TrueMe for the service and for you know the parent portal. Um, they have three different plans. They have a $15 a month plan, which is just text and calling only. You can only text and call from the device. There will be like some basic apps like a calculator and things like that. But texting and calling is really the only thing that it's going to be able to do. The $20 a month plan opens up photo messaging, so picture messaging and, and multimedia messaging. So that will open up group chats and things like that. So that's the $20 a month plan. Then the $25 a month plan is what is going to open up the entirety of their kids safe web apps list. So you'll be able to enable different apps if you're using that $25 a month plan. Again, so you won't have two different things to pay for like with pinwheel you have, you have to pay pinwheel and you have to pay your carrier with TrueMe. it is all in one it is either one of those plans 15 20 or $25 a month. So now that we know kind of the differences between the two, like I said, if you're looking for something that's more carrier agnostic, you would want to pick pinwheel if you want a little more granular control as to what time frames these apps are available, you can go through pinwheel. If you are looking for something that has a kids safe web browser that is its own carrier, things like that, um, you can look at TrueMe. So um, you know, like I said, I like both of these phones. Um, but let's dig into quickly the parent portals of both of these devices. And then we'll wrap it up. As you can see, it's going to check the location, it'll tell you how much battery life, what Wi Fi it's connected to how much storage the device has. And then here is where we can get into all of the different modes and time frames you can set up. So simple school day, you can say get ready for school. And then over here, you can set up different applications that are available, you can limit contacts during that time time frame, you can create a routine, which is, um, we'll get into in a minute, but you can limit it to emergency contacts only during this time frame, add apps, so you can go through here and add different apps to that time frame and then save it. So um, then you can set the time frame. And then here is all the apps that are available during all of these different modes. So that's a simple school day, you can set up different holidays and um, <laughs> COVID-19 day. So basic day, Saturday, Sunday, and you can clone the days. So you don't have to set up all this every single day. So um, there's really a lot of granular control that you can have. Um, as you set up the different applications that are going to be available in the different time frames. So that's where you would set up the days and modes, then routines. This is where you can set up these um, routines. So you click to add a task if you want to add more tasks. And this is a good way to set up um, different tasks that they can check off just on their phone itself. So that helps them remember exactly what they need to be doing for the day. Um, so those are the different routines. Obviously, you can just add so many more things, um, you know, that you have to get ready for school, get ready 
for bedtime, everything. Um, you can just add different tasks. So here's this bedtime routine, brush your teeth, get pajamas on, tell your parent you're ready for bed. It'll send. Um, now here is where you can add or remove all sorts of different apps. Like I said, this is highly, highly curated. So um, if the app has an additional fee associated with it, you'll see a little dollar sign. Um, there are some parental advisories um, on some of these different apps just to make sure that you know exactly what that app can and cannot do. So um, you can see there's just a lot of family management stuff, reading, again, parental advisory. It's going to tell you what age you think they think this is appropriate for. Um, music and audio, obviously for, you know, Apple Music, Amazon Music, there is going to be some parental advisories for those because um, they could have, you know, explicit lyrics or anything like that. Um, like I said, this, it will also say if this is application is available to be monitored by Bark. Um, Spotify Kids. So communication, um, Gizmo Hub for any of um, the Gizmo devices, Google Meet, Marco Polo, WhatsApp. So again, um, you'll probably want to disable or set access to a lot of these different apps um, depending on the age of your child. But um, so super, super curated list of apps. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go through every single one, but um, but you can see, oh, and then, you know, Google Calendar, which I love that they've added that. Um, here's where you can check into the phone history. You can see the text history and call history. Um, you know, this, send a text message, test, test, um, needs review. So these, um, these text messages tried to go to the phone, but they did not go through to the phone. So I can review it and then, um, and then after I review it, I can approve it or reject it um, based on based on what I see. So um, it's not going to get through to the phone until like I manually approve it. Um, and then here is where the contacts will be approved, rejected, pending. Um, you can add the contacts right here and create different groups so that the um, contacts can be grouped specifically. And then just any status updates about the pinwheel system itself like any issues or anything that it's having so that is the caregiver portal for pinwheel um, again you can set up some group texting um, obviously this is not my son's phone number i just wanted to show you basic um, things that the pinwheel portal can do this is the true me parent portal you can access this from your phone web browser by just going to parent.trueme.com and this will pull up after you log in you can see this is the GPS. It will show you exactly where your child is. You can also see if the device is enabled and set a daily screen time limit. So this is how much time is available for the entire day on there. Uh, you can see how much time is remaining, how much time was spent yesterday, and their most used app and today's total app time. So this is all just kind of right on the home screen. You can see if I go over here to settings, let's go to web settings. You can turn on or off the ability to access a web browser. So if you turn it on and you enable weekday limits, you can say that the browser is available from this time to this time. You can enable weekend limits that are different. And here's where you select the browser. So if you select this Chrome browser, it's going to be unrestricted. There will be no filtering. It will not have the safe list. If you select this, it's going to be the Kids Smart browser. It's going to have the safe list. And here's where you can manage the safe list websites. So you type in the selected URL. Obviously, you want to be able to go to familytechzone.com and you can add any URL that you want listed here. You can also toggle on and off the ability to access apps. So if you toggle it off, they're going to not have the ability to access any of these apps, but with it on, you can enable any of these kids smart apps. So you can see all the different apps that are currently available for the device. And then you can also see what the basic apps are. So you can turn on and off any of these basic apps. So if you don't want them to have maps or a calculator or access to my files, you can turn off those in this location here.
and then you can see what apps are coming soon. So these are the apps that are in the works currently. They are not available yet, but these are coming to the device very soon. So here's where you can check out the text messaging. You can allow text messaging on or off, image and group messages on or off, and set time limits for the texting. Again, just like with the browser, you can either select the safe messenger or you can go to Android Messenger, which will have unrestricted access to send and receive texts from anyone. So this is where you would turn that off. So in the future, if you want to open it up a little bit more, you can toggle on the Android Messenger, uh, or if you want to just keep it to the safe messenger, you can select that one. Here's where you would manage contacts. So you can type in um, any contact that you want, Here's the permissions that that contact has. So they have permissions to text, image, and group message, and call Michael. That is all that is allowed. You can also put in some emergency contacts that are available. So you can put in your local family doctor, uh, babysitter, childcare, any of these emergency contacts can also be included in the contacts. I've already gone over these apps and then your contact or and then just the account information. So I apologize that I'm not going to say my favorite. I really like them both. There is a discount code for both of them. I will say for the next um, week, maybe if you're using the discount code family tech, the phone is free on Trumi. So uh, go ahead and try and take advantage of that. I think that will go away at the end of February. So um, make sure you get in before the end of February. If it's after February, it's just Family Tech is just going to give you a discount. It won't give you the phone for free. I apologize. But that is my reviews. Hopefully you make the decision that is best for your family and we will see you next time.